Okay, so um, today we are talking about exponents. The um, Basically the basics of exponents, we're calling this Exponents 101. Basically exponents are kind of a shorthand way of writing things. So if you look, I know this is a little bit small, but if you look at the warm-up that I gave your class today, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Well, this is something we've been learning about for a long time. Really, since probably 5th or 6th grade exponents, we have 5 of them, so this is 3 to the 5th power. This is called the exponent. This is called the base. The big part and the bottom is the base. Like the base of a house would be the bottom part that holds it up. Um, and this whole thing is called a power. 3 to the 5th power. Um, what we're trying to understand is how to use this with algebra, with variables. So there's something that I want to show you with numbers, and then we'll add variables, x's, y's, a's, b's, whatever else. Um, but for right now, if we can understand what happens when we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and we multiply that by 2 times 2 times 2, right? Well, what's this first part? It's 2 to the 4th. And that second part is 2 to the 3rd. Oops, shouldn't be an equals there. That second part is 2 to the 3rd, right? So we know that, well, what's this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2's. So this is 2 to the 7th. And what's 4 right here? 4 plus 3. Well, it happens to be 7. And so that's kind of how these rule, this rule is going to work out. What I'm saying is that, Every time you have the same base, right, you keep that base. Don't do anything to it. Just keep it, right, as two, right, and add the exponents together. So when you have multiplication, you keep the base and you add the exponents. Um, let's give a quick, another quick example. I want to keep this video as condensed as possible, so everything in here is important, but I'm not kind of boring you and I'm letting you get to practice as soon as possible. So we keep the base, which is 4, and we add the exponents, okay? And I'm just going to really quickly, while I talk about that, just kind of show you what this is. Here's 4 to the 2nd, right? Here's 4 to the ninth. I need 9 of them, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that was a lot of work. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of them. So 4 to the 2nd and 4 to the 9th is ended up being 4 to the 11th. So this is the long way. This is the faster way. Okay? So we're going to start doing it most definitely the faster way, which is this. Um, so now we need to get a general rule going. So what's our general rule for exponents? Well, it's this. I'm going to make it in green so it kind of jumps out at you. Here's the rule. Anytime you have some number or some variable to a power multiplied by that same number variable, that same base to a different power, you keep the base, which is the a, and you add the exponents. Okay? That's your generalized rule. So this is important. We could put a little star here, something you don't want to miss out on. Um, so let's do it with a variable real quick and then we'll move on. So see this one right here, x to the third times x to the fifth? x to the third times x to the fifth. Well, keep the variable base and add the exponents. That's to the eighth. So that's the answer. It's pretty simple, actually. The arithmetic's pretty easy, right? We're going to squish one more in here, OK? Uh, make sure you have kind of all this in your notes. Um, but what you want to do here is, I'm going to write this as an, an important thing, is keep keep the base and add the exponents. So keep the base, add the exponents. And that only works when you have the same base, of course. We're not going to deal with different bases for a little bit. Um, let's just talk about one more thing that gets people, and I don't want it to get you. If you had n, some variable, and then n to the eighth, well, nothing in between them means what every time in algebra class? When it's squished together, there's nothing in between them. That's always a multiplication, but it's invisible. And what would n be? To what power would that be? Well, that is automatically to the first power. 
So that's going to be n to the ninth then, because we keep the base and we add the 1 and the 8 to get 9. Okay, so now we're going to basically just kind of define what everything is. So if I had x uh, to the second, right, I would say that this whole thing right here, this whole thing is called a power, okay? It's x to the second power in this case. So that's just a definition, just so you know what that is, power. Um, this part right here, this little part right up top, I think most of you guys know that that's the exponent, okay? That piece of it. And then this bottom piece, color coding here, um, that's the base, okay? You definitely want to know that. That's the base. Um, so now we're going to kind of just deal with that and just get right into this. So what we want to do today is multiply monomials. A uh, quick word about that. Let's let's just make sure you have that jot, jotted down. We'll call these definitions. This is an example because it can change. Um, what we want to do is kind of understand what does the word how do we multiply monomials? Multiplying, that's another word that we just got to get down. Monomials. Um, does anybody know what the word mono stands, what the prefix mono stands for? Mono. Well, why do I got this guy here? What game is he from? He is from the popular game Monopoly. So we have Monopoly. Um, in Monopoly, right, when someone's winning, and they're doing real well, what's basically happening? Well, a monopoly is when one person, it could be one person or company, and this is a this is a loose definition. One person or company controls controls everything, right? In that market. Okay. That's controls the market share. Um, so this is when one person or company controls everything. One. So mono means one. Okay. Sometimes this guy, I always picture him having a monocle. Okay. Just tied to his little coat there. Monocle means that it is not a bifocal with two. Right. Bicycle has two. Mono means one. One eyeglass. Well. Oh well. There it is. So that's a monocle, as you can see. Um, and what's the other one? Monotone, okay? I try not to teach in a monotone way, but monotone means um, when your voice doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to be your voice, but it could be your voice, uh, doesn't change tone. Well, if it doesn't change tone, it's just one tone the whole time. Kind of boring. Monotone. So, one tone, right? One tone. That's what that's saying. So, a monomial is one um, algebraic expression, one basically one chunk, okay, of an algebraic expression. So, here's an example of a monomial. Um, I would say uh, three x to the third. Um, or, I could give you another example, 4x to the second. Okay, these are all monomials because, as you can see, there's no addition or subtraction sign. It's just one piece, right? So this is a monomial, this is a monomial, this is a monomial. Um, what we're trying to do is multiply monomials, which means that we need to multiply two of these together. So let's say we just took the first two and we try to multiply those together. Okay, so here is multiplying, multiplying monomials. Oh, we already kind of wrote that. Oh well. So here's my first example. If I had 3x to the third and I had to multiply that by 4x squared, what would that be? Well, this is where we got to remember a few things from algebra class, and we've got to just kind of recall all of that stuff to get right now. Um, something called the commutative property of multiplication. When you commute to work, you are traveling, you're changing, you're going somewhere. Um, I'm going to demonstrate the commutative property of multiplication, but I'm going to go fast because 
if you're one of my students, you did this for your warm-up. Basically what I'm saying is, what's 2 times 4 times 1? Well, we know that that's going to be 8, right? Uh, okay, well, what's 4 times 2 times 1? It's a totally different order, but the same numbers. That's going to be 8. And what's 1 times 2 times 4? Well, it's still, again, 8, right? So, so far, we're seeing that it doesn't really matter what order I put these in. Um, I'm going to get 8. So it doesn't matter what order I put this stuff in. I could put 3 times 4 times x to the third times x to the second, and I'm still going to be OK. Is everybody good with that? So in other words, you're not going to need to do this every time, but you can just take this and multiply them. Okay? You can take these two things and multiply them to get 12. And then x, keep the base, add the exponent. This is where that new rule comes in, and there's your answer. Okay, and this only works because I took a bunch of things that were multiplied, right? One, two, three, four things are multiplied here, right? And I changed the order because the order doesn't really matter by this property. This is called the commutative property of multiplication. Okay? It's important to know that because otherwise you have no clue why you're doing this. You're just doing it. Um, but it doesn't matter what order I multiply in. Okay, so 12x to the fifth is what we've got. Okay, so we're almost out of time. Um, I want to be done quickly here, so let's just do a couple examples. If I had 3x to the 4th um, times 2x to the 8th, right? Well, these are both monomials, right? Monomials. We know the base is the big, the big part there. Um, underneath. We're going to keep the base out of the exponent when we do that. Just a real quick rearrange. Just remember, this is what you're kind of doing in your head, because you know that it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Well, we're going to multiply these together and get 6. And then we're going to multiply these two things together. And we're going to keep the base and add the exponent, and that's going to be our answer. Everybody see that? So basically, I took these, and that's what I did in blue. And I took this, and that's what I did in green. Multiplied those. Um, so 6x to the 12th is the answer, and you just write 6x to the 12th. You wouldn't need to put that, that um, dot in between. No need. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go a little over today, sorry. Uh, 4a to the 2nd times 3a to the 10th. Well, we don't need to spend time wasting on that. We know that we just multiply the numbers in front. That's going to give us 12. And then we'll go ahead and multiply these. Using our rule, we keep the base. We add the exponents. We're done. Okay, uh, let's say we had 2b to the third times 5b, right, times 3b to the second. Well, we're going to do everything exactly the same as we were. We're going to multiply this by this by this. Okay, uh, we're going to get 30, and then we're going to multiply all of those exponents, or we're going to add them all, right, keep the base, add the exponents. Don't forget that that's a 1. We talked about it briefly. So you add 3 plus 1 plus 2, right? You get 6. Um, last example, just because I want you to see that this actually has some application. Let's say we had a, um, let's say we had some kind of rectangle like this, okay? And we know that a rectangle has a certain amount of units. So let's say this rectangle is 6 by 2. So what would the area of that rectangle be? Well, the area means it's how many right units we have in here. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's 6 times 2, which is 12. That's the area of these blocks, okay? But this is everything's given to us there. That's pretty easy. When we get to algebra, we need to know the area of something that's a little trickier. We need to know the area of something that might be, oh, I don't know, 2x by 3x squared. What's the area then? Well, we know that we just have to multiply these, right? We have to do the base times the height, and that's the, that's the area of a rectangle. So we multiply the 2 by the 3, like we have been doing, and we multiply the x to the first by the x to the second. It gives us x to the third. That's the area of this right here. That's this whole area right in here. Um, okay, that's enough for today.